So what is participation? What, what does it mean to you? And more importantly, what does it feel like? How do you know that you're participating? Are you participating right now? I'm the one with the microphone. The attention is here, but are you participating? And if you can answer yes to that question, congratulations. I'm in a class, a graduate class at PSU, and our professor calculates a portion of the grade based on class participation. You might all remember this from your, 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 your education. Here's how it works. There's 10 classes, and each class you can get up to three participation points. So how does he determine our level of participation? He doesn't. He asks us to do it. So each class at the end, we hand in a little sheet of paper with a short reflection and how many points we give ourselves. So the first lesson he's teaching us is that we own our way of participating. It's very, very empowering. The other thing that he says is participation is not just talking. He says you can go through this entire quarter and not say a single word and you can be fully participating in this class. And it's at this point where you can hear about half the class breathe a big sigh of relief. <laughs> you know, the introverts and the people who don't like to talk. And it's so, so empowering to, to give people the freedom to really own their participation. So if participation is not just talking, what is it? And again, you all get to decide that for yourself, right? For me, participation also means showing up, being present, and being engaged. So let's just take that first one, showing up, because it's the foundation of participation. So everybody in this room, all of you, have signaled your willingness to participate just by being here. And everybody in this room, it took some effort to be here. And some of you, it may have taken a lot of effort, no matter how hard you traveled. So thank you. Thank you for showing up being willing to participate in this together. So I want to touch just briefly on how I see this, this in our work in co-ops, because we all have to take this back, right? So I want you to think of a word, persuade, and what that means. I think a lot, in a lot of our work, we have a lot of pressure, and it's often around this question, how do we get people to do fill in the blank what we want. How do we get them to shop? How do we get them to show up at board meetings? How do we get them to vote, come to events? And I was so happy to, to read something in here um, a few minutes ago. And I'm just going to read it out. It's one sentence. It says, greater participation does not mean figuring out ways to prod owners to do or to do more things for the co-op. So I don't know about you, but personally, in my life, in my personal professional life, I by the day, I get less and less interested in ever persuading anyone of anything. And you can try to talk me into something, but I'm not probably going to enjoy it very much. So what's the alternative? So I want you to think of another word. The word is invite. So what if we thought of our work as inviting people to participate? And what we're doing today, inviting all of us to participate in a conversation about something that matters. That's where I really think great things are going to come from. Now, it doesn't mean we don't do all the, the things that we do that work, that may be persuading people or getting people to do something. But it's just a fundamental shift for me as to how we see our work. We're inviting people to join in a conversation about things that matter. And that's, that, that's the direction we go in. So. I promise you that there was a tool I was going to remind you of that was really going to, to help you out here. And it's something that everybody possesses. Everyone has it. And I'm going to tell you what it is in about five seconds. <laughs> Not because I like to, to make you wait, but because you might be experiencing it right now. And it's curiosity. To me, it is, it is the key to all of this. It's curiosity. It's, it's something we all have. It's free. It's easy. But sadly, I think in our culture, it can get really dulled very easily. And we can go about our work and our lives thinking, 
thinking we have the answers, thinking we know where we're going and how to get there. And I once had a teacher who said, if you think you know where you're going, you're probably lost. Now that, that might be a little too radical for some people, but I think, there, there's, I think there's a lot of truth in that. So curiosity, it's, uh, it's not one of the um, cooperative principles, like I'm gonna campaign that it become number eight <laughs> up there on the wall someday, is really the key to, to all of this. It, it's the key to learning, it's the key to listening, it evokes empathy, care for community, which is one of the, the principles there. And I, you know, we don't have time, but time and time again in my work, I, I just saw it all the time. It was being curious about people. Someone calls up, asks for a donation. Yes or no, whatever, usually yes. But it's like, well, who are you? What are you all about? It is finding out not so much, I think our job, not so much to find out what people need so we can deliver it, but to find out who they are. And that's where the conversation starts. Thank you. <laughs>